Hey everyone, it's Stitches and Scribbles and today I'm coming um, to you with my July update for the month. So we're going to go through some finished objects, some works in progress, some yarn, and some other stuff that I have been up to or I'm going to be up to in the coming months. So first off, we've got some finished objects. First one I have is a shawl. If you saw my Hershner's haul video, you saw that I got the Crayola Crayons yarn in green in one of my mystery boxes. So I created a zigzag edge shawl with it that ended up looking very much like a cartoon dragon and it is massive so I can't even get the whole thing in frame. Um, I just used a simple garter stitch all the way through with increases and decreases and then did short bind off rows um, to create those zigzag stripe patterns. But I really love how this shawl worked up with the bright and colorful yarn. I think I will definitely be wearing it once it gets a little bit cooler out. Um, I am a teacher so like bright colorful weird clothes are not out of the question for me. Um, plus my students know that I really like dragons and all things fantasy so I'm really excited about that one. The next thing I made that is actually going to be part of an upcoming series, I'm not going to give you too many details yet, um, but I am working on a series of patterns that all have a common fantasy theme, and I'll leave it at that. And they are going to be all knitting patterns, so I'm sorry for my crochet friends. Um, I'll have to make the next series crochet based. But I did a simple triangle shawl that has a knit cable down at the center. And this one was made using a Karen Big Cakes in the color Afternoon Tea. So it got some of those lovely mint stripes along with grays and creams and beige. So kind of um, a bunch of nice neutrals with a, with a bright pop of color with that mint. Um, this is a pretty easy pattern to make. I just did yarn over increases every other row on either side of the cable, as well as yarn over increases every other row on the edges. So this one will be a tutorial eventually with that um, series that I'm working on. So stay tuned for that. Um, last finished object. Um, so I actually am working on two series right now. One is the one that I just kind of hinted at, but I am planning on doing a holiday series, hopefully to have a video that uploads every day of December. But obviously if I'm going to do 25 videos in one month, I'm going to need to pre-film some of them. And since I'm off for the summer, it seemed like a good time to start now. So I have finished the first item from that series, and that series will have some knit, some crochet, and some other stuff that doesn't fall into either category, some little recipes, small craft projects, basically with the idea of them all being um, very giftable projects and pretty low on the amount of time spent to create them, or being holiday themed. So I knitted what I call my perfect Santa hat using uh, Lion Brain Homespun in white and red. I don't have the exact color names because the yarn I used is from the last time that I made Santa hats. So it was sitting in a drawer and I just kicked it up in order to use it. So you guys will get that tutorial. It will be the first one in the series. So this will air on December 1st for you guys if you want to see how to make it, including how to make the pom-pom yourself. All right, those are our finished objects for the week. I actually only have one whip right now, which is very odd for me. Usually I have like three or four, but this just happened to come at a time when I'm in between a lot of projects and had just finished a bunch of them up, uh, mainly the Santa hat and the um, cable shawl that I just showed you I finished yesterday at the time that I'm filming this. So my next or my only whip for this video, is another variation on the bead stitch shawl. That was my very first video on YouTube. So if you want to see a variation on how to do this, you can check out my shawl and haul video from April. It should be the uh, oldest one on my YouTube channel. 
So in that version of the shawl that I filmed the tutorial for, I did bead stitches every third row, and this one I did them every other row, but the pattern is essentially the same. And I am using yarn that I ordered from Amazon, and this yarn kind of has an odd story. So it's gorgeous yarn. It has like 2,000 yards in it or something, so the shawl is going to be massive. But I bought this yarn specifically because it's my mom's favorite colors. It's She really loves white and royal blue and black, although I still think that this is actually navy, not black. It definitely looks black on camera, but I think it's just a really, really, really dark navy. But either way, gorgeous yarn. Um, it's from a company called Zuzu Yarn on Amazon, and I don't even remember what shipping company it came through. But basically, it had the worst shipping experience ever. So I ordered the yarn, and it didn't specifically say on the, on the Amazon page that the yarn was being imported from out of the country. I ordered this yarn on April 11th, and it was originally marked as Prime. However, once I selected the colors I wanted, the colors I wanted were not Prime. So I knew it was going to take longer than two days, and I was fine with that because I was planning on it um, being a gift for Mother's Day, or at least having the yarn arrive in time for Mother's Day, um, even if the final product wasn't finished at that point, because that's just how my brain works. Um, so I ordered the yarn, waited for a while, it hadn't been shipped, and, like there were no shipping updates for like two and a half weeks. and. I know that this was in the middle of like the COVID shutdown and everything, but usually the update, because I had other orders placed in the same time frame, and for those orders, um, they gave me an update saying like, it's in our warehouse ready to go once shipping is up and running. And I didn't get any sort of message like that from Amazon, which was kind of disappointing. So I finally reached out to Amazon and then because it was a third party seller I had to reach out to the third party seller and I just kind of asked like you know where is my package I still don't have a tracking number for it so I can't even like see what country it's in so that's the point where I find out that this yarn is actually shipping from Germany which I was not 100% aware of I obviously I know it was being shipped from somewhere I just didn't know where so it was going to be shipped from Germany so I said, okay, and at that point I kind of just knew that it was going to be at least another two weeks until I got it, which meant that, like, I should have gotten it in early May. So we get to early May, I finally have a tracking number, and I can see the package move from Germany to being stuck in New York for, like, a week and a half to finally being marked as in transit. And the other part about this is that I moved in the middle of all of this. So this <laughs> yarn was being shipped to my old apartment that I no longer lived at because it had been delayed so long at that point. When I originally ordered it, I didn't think it would be a problem because the estimated shipping date was before my move out date, uh, but that changed very quickly. So I'm watching the tracking, it gets marked as delivered on Amazon, so I get all the way to my old apartment and it's not there. So I check the tracking information again, and it says delivered to California. I do not live in California. I live in the Midwest. So that was concerning. So I contacted the seller again. They said they gave me the wrong tracking number, which I've never had that issue before. I don't know if other people have, but I've never had the issue where the seller gave me the wrong tracking number for my package. So she emailed me back and said that they were signing a new tracking number, but that my package was actually still in a carrier facility in New York. So it finally got delivered end of May, so almost two months, more than two months after, no, just about two months after I ordered it. So it finally got delivered to the old apartment, I finally picked it up, but at that point we were way past Mother's Day, so I'm still making it and hoping that my mom really likes it. I still think that it's a very very cool yarn um, but I will never order it again unless it's a color that happens to be marked as prime meaning that it has to be somewhere in the continental US so that's my 
really long, pointless yarn shipping story. But it's here now, and it's beautiful, and I'm definitely really happy with the product. I'm just not real happy with the seller that it came through and how little information they were willing to give me about something that I had paid for and paid shipping for. So that was kind of concerning. And in my head, I was always comparing it to my Hobie order, where I think I said there that, like, it, uh, Hobie gets shipped from Denmark because that's where they're based, but they gave me emails every 48 hours until my package left their facility. So they made sure I knew exactly where my stuff was at all times, and they let me know if things were going to be delayed. They emailed me to check if I got my order. So just the difference in um, how the businesses are run, I think, really speaks to where I will be ordering from in the future. So I think I'm done ordering yarn on Amazon, unless it is marked as Prime. Um, so that's my only whip, and you can see that it started off as white, it's fading into those blue tones, and will eventually get all the way to navy blue. Next thing I have to show you is some... Oh, before we do a yarn haul, I was going to talk to you about books. So in my June update, I mentioned that I was reading the Song of the Lioness series by Tamora Pierce, and I have a couple updates to that series. So I'm now on the last book. Come on, camera, you can focus. Yeah, there we go. I'm on the last book of the first quartet, which is the Song of the Lioness quartet. So the last book is called Lioness Rampant. In my previous video, I talked about the first one and how much I loved it and how much it, to me, read like Narnia and that the language was very targeted towards younger kids, more in the like 8 to 11 range. But I wasn't all the way done with the book when I said that. So I have a couple updates to this series. Um, first of all, by the time the first book ends, the main character Alana is 15, whereas it starts when she's 11. So we have a pretty big age gap there, and that wasn't a huge problem for the series. I think it actually read really well that there was that big of an age jump in the first one, um, but that age jump continued in each consecutive book. So we very quickly went from a book that read as being targeted at middle grade to like early young adult to books that are definitely more adult driven. So I think I'm kind of struggling with to read the series because I don't know what age group it's targeted at as a teacher. Like obviously I read a lot of kids books where I'm reading it trying to figure out if this is a book I should recommend to my students or not and just to keep up with what my students are reading. This book series just kind of confused me because I couldn't figure out who it was targeted, targeted at. Um, in addition, I'm still going to finish the series. I'm a little bit less than halfway through the last one. Um, I will say the first and the second book were really well done. I think by the end of the second book, the main character is like 20-ish. Um, however, by the third book, it, for lack of a better word, be, for lack of better wording, it becomes very clear that it was written in the 80s. Um, there are some racial stereotypes of characters that did not age very well, and I'll leave it at that. Um, I will still say that the storyline is very good. It just, the complexity level makes it seem like a book that's written for 12 or 13 year olds, but the content level is much higher than that. So as an adult reader, it's it feels a little bit flat. And I hate to say that because I know that I borrowed this from a friend and she absolutely loved this book series, but I think she read it as a young adult for the first time. So that may be the difference here that I'm just the wrong target age, but it's also not the target age that I'm reading on behalf of my students. So I will say it has a lot of really good world building and fantasy elements in it. So I will absolutely finish the series also because I just don't like not finishing series. My brain can't process that. So I'm going to finish the last book and then this book series actually ha it's like a series of series that all take place in the same universe. So the first book of the next part is called Wild Magic and the rest of the series were written later by the author. So I'm going to finish Lioness Rampant and then start 
this one and if this one is also kind of giving me the same issues as the original series then I'll stop but I'm hoping that as we get to books that were written more recently um, that maybe some of the things that I wasn't a fan of will go away so we'll see this one is part of a quartet as well so I think that there are four books in this series and I think there are four or five series total that all exist in this universe so I'll keep you updated with where I'm at. Um, I also have been listening to Harry Potter on audiobook. I'm now on the second one um, and I've been really enjoying rereading those as an audiobook instead of just off the print version because I've read the print version so many times it's kind of nice to hear somebody else's interpretation of what characters sound like and act like. So I've been really enjoying that and that's actually how I've been falling asleep at night. Um, next up some a little bit of a yarn haul and a sneak peek at the next project that I'll be working on for this channel. So in addition to that blue yarn that I got from Zuzu Yarn I got this one as well which starts as like a very 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 pastel blue and moves into turquoise and then orange on camera it's looking like there's a lime green stripe there actually isn't that's just the turquoise and the orange stranded together um, this yarn has three strands that are not really even twisted together they're pretty loosely wound together but as you go through the yarn um, eventually individual strands change color so you'll get to a point where there's like two strands of the first color and one of the middle color and then it'll be two of the middle color and one of the first color and so on so that it gets through all three colors but it's going to create kind of that ombre effect just because of how the stranding works so this is the other one I got again it's like 2,000 yards I don't remember what the material is because they came without bands on them and they don't have color names. But honestly, if you can not go through the same thing that I did to get them, that's probably for the best. I have seen that this is comparable to Sheep Gis yarn. I know that that's not how you pronounce it, but there's a, a company that makes very similar yarn that I have heard is more reliable and available more easily in the U.S., so... Don't get this yarn unless you have a reliable way to pick it up. And if you do have a reliable way to pick it up, um, please let me know because as I said, I do actually really like the product. I just didn't like my experience with the seller. Um, next up, I had fun at Michael's and Hobby Lobby recently. So that's where I picked up that Karen cake that I used for my cable shawl. But I also picked up a couple other things, just kind of whatever was on sale. There is one that I'm not going to show just because it is now buried in a project bag for a trip, but I did get some baby blanket yarn that's in gray and mint, but you will probably end up seeing that in a future tutorial. Um, but right now it's packed up for something else, so I can't get it out. But I also picked up um, the Loops and Threads Barcelona yarn in the color Blue Ridge, and I got two of them. This is also going to be for that fantasy knitting series that I am planning. So you will see this pop up in a tutorial sometime soon. Um, that whole series that I'm planning was inspired by yarn that I had picked up as well as some other things that I was looking at. Um, so while I didn't get this with the intention to use it for that specific tutorial that it's going to be used in, um, it fit really nicely with the theme that I'm planning so you will see that in a future video. Um, next up and these are gonna look a little funny because I caked them but I have Yarn Bee Soft and Sleek DK. It is 100% low pill acrylic and it is in the color Irish Rain so it's a really really deep dark green that is absolutely one of my favorite colors and this yarn is so soft and so lightweight it is also going to go in that fantasy knitting series and I am in love with this yarn I'm probably going to go back and get it in other colors because there are some projects for that series that I don't have the yarn for yet so I will probably be using this 
brand to create them because I'm just a huge fan of it. I think it's gorgeous. It did not cake up really well. It kept falling off of my yarn winder and this one looks even messier because of that, but they came in almost in a ball, so I didn't really want to use it if it wasn't caked up. Next thing I got is yarn that I've been looking at for a long time, and it was finally on sale when I went to Michael's, but it is the Mandela Tweed Stripes in the color Buddha. Um, it has 400 426 yards per skein and hundred percent acrylic and machine washable and all that good stuff. This is what I'm going to be using to recreate that cable shawl as a tutorial and I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love these colors so much. I think that they are so pretty and they're going to work so well with the series that I have planned, so I'm very, very excited to use this. So you will see that soon. The last thing I wanted to show you is a swatch that I did. I have one um, crochet tutorial I'm planning before this series starts um, because it's another kind of summary tutorial like my ombre kimono cardigan was. My camera does not want to focus today. That's, that's fine. So I have a Come on. Pineapple lace pattern that I'm going to be working into another kimono style sweater. So if the first one wasn't really your cup of tea, there is a second one that will be coming out. Um, I haven't decided yet if in the video I'm going to use the lavender or the green that I have. This was also from my Hobie haul where um, I got the four giant cones of Cotton King's yarn. So I have a little bit of it caked up just to make it easier to work with so I don't have to carry the giant cone around every time I want to work on it. But you will be seeing a kimono cardigan with this crochet pattern in it and you'll see the my favorite easy lace stitch is making a reappearance for the body of the cardigan and then the pineapples will be the edging. So that will be the next crochet tutorial that gets uploaded. Um, in addition to that, I'm also starting to do some more drawing based videos because the channel is called Stitches and Scribbles so um, you should see a couple more painting videos coming soon but I also got a Wreck This Journal from Target and you can see that I've already marked off some pages and I've already completed some pages so pretty soon I think it'll be the week after this video airs um, you'll see the first Wreck This Journal video um, where I used Stabilo pens and markers and filled in some of the pages and I already have pages marked for the next set that I want to do but you'll get to see not only the finished pages but me coloring in the pages as well and I'm really really happy with this book so far. I think it was a great creative exercise for me. Um, and I'm really excited about how it's turning out and all of the beautiful art that it's going to inspire and I had a lot of fun with all of my really bright vibrant colors so yeah you'll get to see that next week um, I hope you enjoyed this update kind of podcast style video um, leave comments below if you know somewhere to get Zuzu yarn that is not Amazon I would really appreciate it you could also leave comments a book series that you recommend if you've read the Tamora Pierce um, I think it's called the Tortal Universe series, whatever it is. Let me know if you read it, if you liked it, your thoughts about it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial, video, whatever we've got going on. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.